So here's an evaporative coil for a freezer. So this is a domestic refrigerator freezer combination. So this is what you see behind the panel at the very top part of the freezer. Notice how wide these fins are. So if you look at an air conditioning fin, notice how close together they are. So here we have a whole lot of air bypass and here there's very little air bypass. Well, that's done by design. These coils here, we do not need to dehumidify. We don't need to pull moisture out. What we need to do is space these because the temperature of that refrigerator or the temperature of the freezer is gonna be a lot lower temperature, which means we have a lower pressure, which means we have a lower saturated temperature as well. This coil here will end up freezing you're gonna get frost on these fins. So we space these a lot wider to allow frost to build up on these fins and it still not block any airflow. On a residential coil, we don't want any frost on there. Notice how close together these fins are. If we get frost on these fins here, they're blocking airflow and this thing's gonna freeze even faster. Here we have our brand new evaporator coil. This is gonna replace that one that's in that walk-in box. And one thing I wanna point out to you is notice how wide these fins are. When you deal with refrigeration, these fins are going to be much farther apart than they are with air conditioning. And the reason is because there's going to be ice formation and frost built up, and it still allows for airflow to go through. So it's very important stuff. We tried to put an AC evaporator in here. Those fins are much closer together because those should never freeze up. So this allows us to still have heat transfer and still have plenty of airflow moving through it. So this is cool. This is upside down. These are going to be our mounting feet over here. This is what's going to mount to the top of the box. There's four feet on it, four feet, one in each corner. Refrigerant piping or suction piping and our liquid piping. This is our drain pan, so it's gonna be the very bottom of the unit. Drain line's gonna connect. What's nice about this new model is it has these hinges over here. So we can take the screws off the other side and this will hinge up so we can service that unit, clean the pan out. I really like that, it's a nice improvement. So this is kind of the return air. The air is from the box is coming through this side and the fans are pulling it through. So this is what we're gonna see on the front side. Again, this is upside down. So here you can really see the difference between these two evaporators. This one is just completely shot, pan shot. Here's how it should be looking with all these shiny fins and clean, you can see light through it. Even though this is a domestic refrigerator, walk-in coolers and walk-in freezers also have their fins spaced very far apart because frost buildup is natural. On a walk-in freezer or even these domestic freezers, they have some kind of a heating circuit. Here at the bottom, this is a heating element so that we can melt the ice back off later. We also have a heater and a drain pan and our drain line's heated as well so we can get that liquid away from that evaporator coil during a defrost. But on a walk-in cooler, what's cool is that even though we have ice built up on here or frost built up on here, the off cycle of the unit will defrost it. So walk-in cooler is above freezing. When the system cycles off, the air temperature being above freezing, we're still moving air across this, so the air starts melting the ice. And as the air melts the ice, the ice changing state is a type of latent heat, and we're also having a cooling effect with that as well. So as the air, the warmer air is moving across this evaporator coil, it helps melt the ice off of there. As the ice melts off, it hits the drain pan and runs outside. So typically with a walk-in cooler, or even any kind of cooler, you don't typically have a defrost. Although I have seen them before, it's not usual. You will have a defrost heater of some sort on any of these walk-in freezers. Domestic refrigerator, this is in the top section where the freezer is. So this works the same way as a walk-in freezer. It's just a lot easier to handle. The big thing I wanted to point out to you was the difference in the spacing. Here's another style of an evaporator for a domestic refrigerator. The heat would leave the refrigerator and go to the refrigerator. A significantly older model, but it's still a domestic style evaporator coil. Notice how it looks completely different than the other one, but it's still the same process. Our refrigerant's coming here. This is part of our meter device as well as a capillary tube. And the refrigerant starts traveling through these tubes and it's boiling from a liquid to a vapor. It's absorbing heat. And then we'll come over here. We zig back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as we're boiling from a liquid to vapor. And it boils back and forth, back and forth. It divides over here and continues through these tubes. We come all the way back to this side. We hit our big suction pipe and our suction pipe carries on back to our compressor. So here you can see how they're both in the same tube, but this one is our suction pipe and this small tube here, that is our capillary tube, our metering device. Another example for an evaporator coil is uh, this Coke machine. I believe it's a 1950 model Coke machine this came out of, uh, but it's really cool here. We have our two tubes here. This small tube is our capillary tube, goes to our evaporator coil, and here the refrigerant just runs along in these tubes in a circular pattern. Notice how wide they're spaced. So this was a cooler 
It relied on off-cycle defrost. And notice how wide these spacings are. So we had a lot of heat transfer, a lot of tubing. It was cool because the fan set, I believe it was on the bottom or the top, and it just moved air through this coil right here, and we were able to transfer heat. But it's still an evaporator but this wasn't designed to control humidity. So we didn't have to worry about that extra factor. So there was a lot of air bypass to the larger spacing of these tubes, but it's still an evaporator. So when you look at evaporators, they're not all dehumidifying and they don't all look the same. As we're doing work in this kitchen, it's real important when you're working in these restaurants to get early, get here early, make sure you beat the crowd to rush. It's very tight working conditions here. And if you've ever worked in a restaurant, it's go, 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 go all the time. Everybody bumping into somebody. We're going to be working on this little cooler right here, and the problem with that is going to be if we're working here, we're going to block every single flow of everybody. Plus, we're going to be grazing, we're going to have most of our tools out. It's going to be a big issue. So, we want to make sure that we're here early, nobody's here, it's what we want. We've got to rush fast. What we have here is a cooler, and this is an undercooler. So, we have the cooking gear on top, and these are the coolers. So, it has these drawers that slide out, and there's food hands that fit inside of here. Our temperature is at 51 degrees. So this thing is not working. They've already charged it a few times. They've tried some leak sealants in it. Just nothing worked. So we have to take these drawers out before we can actually get the service in. Wind these wheels up on both sides so they come out of that groove. Then we pull the back wheels up and they also are going to slide out. Now we have the drawers out of the way. But one of the things you really need to be doing in the kitchen is wearing gloves. I have horrible bad habits about not wearing gloves. It's my, my worst issue, I think. But all this stuff here is food's been sitting there. It gets gummed up. It gets dirty. These are things that uh, are, should be required for maintenance for the restaurant, but oftentimes they're not. So behind that panel right there is our evaporator, and that's where the leak is. Sands are dirty. We have to clean them too. Okay. And now, uh, should I take this down? Yeah. <laughs> Gonna be hell bracing that in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Once we get that loose, we have to wipe all this down because we're gonna have to like lay in there to brace it. Yeah, I understand. I knew that that was coming. This is just for learning purposes. about this evaporator is the spacing in the fins. So here's our tubing and here's all of our spacing. These are spaced wide. So we don't have to worry about them getting clogged up, getting dirty. Even though this is a cooler and not a freezer, having this wide spacing is important so we don't have to worry about having airflow issues, dirt, gum, gum up, things growing in here. Because it's not easy to get to the service. So these are why we have these wide spacings and our refrigerant lines are going to be here. So our refrigerant lines are going to braze in here. So the hardest part is going to be getting to the system to work.